Top Gun Maverick finally opened Memorial Day weekend 2022. And I had the chance to see it a couple weeks ago, and here I'm finally gonna post my review. It's gonna be a brief one. There's not a lot that I have to say about this movie, but what I do have to say is all good things. Tom Cruise reprises his role as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, uh, a follow-up to Top Gun that was originally released in 1986. This movie, I wouldn't say it had a troubled production, but its original release date was supposed to be 2019, and obviously it just came out now in 2022. So I was a bit skeptical about how it was gonna turn out. When a movie is held for that long, uh, and there's reshoots, there's always the question of what's going on with the production. Is there issues on set? Is the story not coming together? What is happening? But I think for this movie, it was that they had to shoot more for complex uh, action sequences, which we'll talk about later, and that um, obviously movies weren't really releasing throughout the year of 2020 and 2021 in theaters, which makes a lot of sense that this movie would wait for a theatrical release, because... I mean, I think that that's the best place to see it. This movie really shines in a theater. I think that renting it at home, you're still going to get a good experience. But the sound in a theater, the screen size, I mean, it just adds to what this movie is trying to achieve, which is a very real, energetic, exciting plane action. So let's talk about the movie. I think, I think where the movie really excels is obviously in the effect works and the editing. It is, it is a very easy to follow story. It's not too complex. Unfortunately, that also means that the tension in some parts is lacking. You know, we feel that our characters are very safe for most of the time, but at the same time, the, the way that it shoots the action with the planes still it still creates a level of excitement that even though we feel our main characters are gonna make it out they're still with the the loud sounds of the plane engines the way that they're shot and how close they seem to be to the terrain and each other there's there's always excitement in this movie even though there is some predictability in the story um, what I really like about the movie, and I think is probably its best kind of achievement, is that the story structure follows, you know, the whole middle act is a training montage, more or less. But the training montage sets up the mission that they have to accomplish at the end that actually features the real danger. Um, and it spends so much time going through every single piece of the mission that by the time we get to the final act where they are in their danger zone, they are, you know, facing the risk of potential harm, we can just focus on all of what they are doing instead of how they are doing it because of how established the mission is. And it is an exciting mission. I mean, they have to go through this tight mountain range, this valley, there are missiles that if they go too high up, they'll be shot at. At the end, they have to pull this huge high G-force maneuver, and they have to, you know, shoot a very precise, almost uh, Death Star run-like target. It's actually kind of a very similar final mission to the Death Star run. Um, but what works so well here is just how real the planes look, how real all the effects work. I am unsure what is practical and what is CGI. I think that like the mix is so blended perfectly that, I mean, as a viewer, it just, it all feels genuinely real. And that really adds to the excitement and the engagement of the film. Um, when they do these high G-force maneuvers, we see in the cockpits with the actors and their faces just getting like 
shoved down by all that force. Their their face is like basically melting. They're wrinkling. I mean, there's something so genuine about that that it stops making us question that we're seeing a movie and it starts to blend into reality. And therefore we accept the ride that we're on so much better and the payoff of you know us not questioning the film and questioning its realism just allows us to sit and enjoy the movie. In terms of like surprises, I would say that this movie doesn't really have any. You know, like I, I saw it once in theaters. Am I gonna be like dying to see it again? No, the the character arcs and the way that it all plays together. The director Joseph Kinsinski does a very good job of letting the action talk and, you know, allowing the flight sequences to carry us through the film and carry our enjoyment. The edits are not quick and jumpy. Everything makes sense. Uh, the placement of all of the planes and all the actors and all the action, it's very coherent. The dog fights, they're exciting. Although I, I could have maybe used like a little bit more between, you know, two aerial planes. But at the same time, dogfights aren't very common. And I imagine that when they happen, they're also not very long. So the movie does like a good job of giving you just enough of what you want, maybe want, maybe leaving you wanting more, but not giving you too much of what you want, making you leave hoping that you'd got less. So all in all, Top Gun Maverick is a good movie. I'd recommend a lot of people to see it. It seems like it harkens back to like that 80s style film, you know, good filmmaking, easy filmmaking, an easy watch, not too, complex, not too uh, emotional. At the end of the day, you feel good, you leave the theater with a smile, and uh, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a throwback to a type of filmmaking and a type of film that just isn't made very often anymore. We're, we're in such a realm of big blockbuster, long series productions, that it's kind of nice to have something that starts and ends in two hours and just leaves you excited and feeling like you were on a good ride. Obviously, I'm not the only one that seems to be liking it. The movie has made uh, close to $402 million in domestic box office. Internationally, it's made $755 million. It's still going up. It's got some competition now with Jurassic World and um, Buzz Lightyear coming out. But I think uh, I think it's it's more than earned its share. It's been top of the box office for its weekend, and uh, it still is pulling in some money. So if you haven't had the chance to see it, I recommend seeing it now before it leaves theaters. It's definitely the best place to see it, and uh, let me know how you like it. Thanks for watching.